Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to a really fun project today. I will be using the whole 8x8 pad and I'm going to show you how you can come up with a journal which is really easy to put together. This can be a notebook, it can be used as an album, it can be a junk journal, your weekly organizer. There are so many different ways to be used since it's going to have many pages. The binding system allows you to add as many pages as you like, plus you can interchange them. You see there are pockets and trust me it is super easy and not at all time consuming to create and you can turn any 8x8 paper part that you have into something like this. So today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create all those pages with pockets and everything and then I'm going to discuss different options for binding. Of course I went with a disc binding because I absolutely love this type. And to start you are going to need an 8x8 paper pad. Of course for demonstration reasons I'm going to work with my collection. This is Create Happiness, Welcome Home and this is the 8x8 pad. Now if you open up the pad you will notice that uh, one side of the page always has a focal point, a really beautiful theme, but the back side is kind of a background page. And for this project I want to play with the background pages as I don't want to introduce any one of those images on my project. So first I'm going to separate all those pages from the pad so that I can work with them. Keep in mind that this pad is less than $7 and uh, we are going to use all of it. I am going to keep some of the pages on the side and I'm going to show you exactly which ones I will use uh, for the actual pages and which I'm going to use for decorating them. So just complete deconstruct the whole pad. Now I'm going to separate them in two different stacks. On the left I'm placing the pages that I'm not going to use as pages for my journal. So these are going to be either for the cover or for decorating the project later on. And on the right you can see all the background pages that I'm placing one under the other that are going to be turned into pockets or pages for my journal. So I'm going to put those four aside for now and let's work with these ones. And by the way, these are eight in total. So I'm going to show you a few ways that you can play with them. And for that you are going to need your scoring board as well as your paper trimmer. And let's start with this one. And of course I'm planning to use this side. I grabbed my uh, scoring board and I'm going to use that thing which is going to fold on the other side to create my pockets. So you need to score at 2 and then rotate and score at 4, so at half. Now the finished journal is going to be 4 by 6. Now I'm going to fold it exactly where I have scored so you can see as I turn this flap over I create pockets at the bottom with a beautiful border plus it does have a saying on one side. Now I'm going to uh, stick everything together later on. For now I'm just going to do the scoring and the folding for all of my pages. Now for this one I'm going for a different design of a page so I'm just scoring this at half at 4 inches. I'm going to fold it and of course just because my uh, complete journal is going to be 4 by 6 I need to trim it down. But definitely you can keep the size and the width of your, the height and the width of your pages completely different to one another which is going to give that a junk journal look. Sometimes it's super fun to do that. So uh, if you like you can definitely go ahead and do the same design that we did previously. However I'm going to show you another way. So here I just uh, cut out a little bit from the side and I'm going to fold to create this uh, flap on an angle. You can keep the flap if you like, I'm going to trim it off completely and then at the end I'm going to stick those pages on one side which is going to create another pocket page. And this is going to create a pocket at the same time it's going to allow you to see a little bit of the beautiful design on the other side of the paper. 
I'm keeping this aside. I will do the sticking later on. Let's do all the folding now. So for this page, I again, I'm going to fold at four. And this time I'm not going to create any flaps like I did for the previous two designs. I'm just going to chop it off to be four by six. And this is going to have a pocket at the top. That's why I'm going to use a circle punch to create that slit at the top that indicates that there is a pocket there. Plus it makes it easy to grab the inserts. For this pattern paper, I will do what I did for the first page. So again, I'm going to score at two to create that flap and then rotate and score at four. When you create this type of a design, it's not going to have any waste. So again, fold and your page is ready with a couple of uh, bottom flaps, which are tiny little pockets. So with how many pattern papers that you have, you can repeat the same idea again and again to create your pages. So here, for example, I'm going to score it at half and chop off the excess, but you can definitely create a flap at the bottom. You can see how beautiful it's going to look. So it is really up to you. I'm just showing you the different ideas and what you can do with a pattern paper with minimal waste. Now I have my pocket here and this time I'm going to create a side pocket. So again, I'm going to grab my circle and just create a notch on one side. So for this one, again, scoring at half, cutting off the excess and creating a notch. Just keep on going with whatever uh, pages you have left. Just interchange the pockets so you have side pockets or top pockets or maybe create those fla bottom flaps. This is always going to add something interactive and fun in your book. As you turn the pages, nothing is going to be the same. And these are the two last pages that I'm creating. But again, add as many as you like. It really is customizable. Plus, I wanted to create the project by using just one paper pad. And let's take a look at what we have up to now. So I have two pages, which are side pockets, three pages, which are top pockets. And then the three ones that we created with the special flaps. And now, of course, it's time to put them together, to stick them down. For that, you can either go with glue. I would recommend to use glue with a very fine tip and go around the edges that you want to stick down. Or like me, you can go with double sided tape. I have tons of this double sided tape and I want to use it as I go with my projects. That's why I decided to go with this one. So here is the first one ready. And you can definitely create inserts for this pocket if you like. You can even have some ribbon or a string going out of that slit. It is really up to you. I'm not going to create the inserts for all those pockets. I'm just going to show you the basic structure and you can take it from there. Now, this is going to be a repeat of the previous one. So let's move on to the next one. So this is going to be a page with a pocket at the top. That's why we are adding a double sided tape at the bottom and on the side. And of course, repeat the same process for the other two pages that are exactly the same as this one. For the ones that have the bottom flap, you need to add a little bit of double sided tape there on one side and on the other side. Don't peel it off yet. I am trying to peel it off here. Then I remembered I shouldn't at this stage. Just fold it, look at it. And this is where you can decide if you want to have another pocket on the inside. So you can have uh, a little bit of a double sided tape at the bottom and on the side to turn it into a top pocket like so. Or you can have at the top at the bottom and leave the side open to have a side pocket or uh, in my case, I'm just going to enclose it completely as I already have those two little pockets at the front and I don't really need another one. It's really up to you. It's very customizable. Now, the beauty of this design and how we put together this uh, little journal is that uh, if you have other 8x8 uh, paper pads that you haven't used, that you have been holding and you want to use them somehow, it is a great project to create a little journal 
Everything is going to be the exact same steps, however it's going to look completely different just by using different designs from your pattern papers. So here I am creating the one with the flap on an angle, which is going to create a fun pocket, a really big one, and you can create a slit uh, at this stage with your uh, uh, pants if you like. And then finally, this is the one that you put together just like we did for the previous one. So here is what we have up to now, all the pages together. You can uh, uh, stop at this stage if you like, decide which is the um, order of the pages that you want to use and uh, turn them into a booklet by using a spiral binding, a disc binding system or you can use the hinge binding system to turn them into a little album. It really is up to you. In my case, just because I like uh, quick and easy projects, I'm going with the scenes. So I'm just going to uh, punch four holes at the center. And by the way, I'm using the one for the discs. This is the mini scenes that I have that gives you this option as well as one more option in the same package with the circles for the spiral, if you like. And these are interchangeable depending on the project that you are going for. Really handy to have. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to punch only four holes for all of the pages. Before you go ahead and punch your pages, that just do a test on another piece of scrap paper that has the same uh, exact sizes as your page to make sure on where you are supposed to align it. Here I'm aligning all the pages on the right side of the machine, as you can see. But really don't worry too much if that um, uh, all the pages that you do don't align perfectly together. Even if some are a little bit off, it's not an issue really. It's going to look like a junk journal and it's going to look as if it was intentional. Also, I'm sure I could have punched two or even three pages together at once. But anyway, I just went one by one. Now I have also cut out white pages and I'm going to use those in between the other pages just for the fun of it, just to show you that you can add whatever you like into your booklet. So here I'm just uh, going to punch three of them at a time. And you can be really creative at this stage on what pages you want to add extra on your uh, booklet. You can go with ephemeras, you can go with acetate pieces if you like, you can even punch envelopes and add them there. And then finally, to put this together, I'm going to use some discs. The ones that I have here are metallic discs that I got, I believe, from Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. But there are plenty of uh, variety on these type of discs. They come in uh, all kinds of sizes. Uh, and uh, you can find plastic ones. You can even find uh, metallic ones, like the ones that I have here. And uh, even those cute ones with the heart. And of course, the bigger the disk, the chunkier your notebook can come up, since you can add more and more elements. Now I'm going to interchange them, so one pattern paper, one white page, and I will go on like that until I finish the whole book. Uh, this way I end up having seven white pages, which would make a great uh, weekly calendar, like an organizer, for example. But you can definitely add even more pages depending on your needs. Here is how it looks at the moment. You can definitely stop here or if you want to take it a step further to make it look more professional and uh, finished, you can definitely create covers for the front and the back. And of course, you can decorate some of the pages, you can add photos, you can stamp, you can uh, add the inserts and add uh, little strings and embellishments on the pockets. It's really up to you how far you want to take it and how time consuming it should be. So here I have some cardboard and this is uh, four by six in size. I'm going to create the covers front and back. Remember, I put that aside when I started with creating the pages so that I can use it for the covers. So cut it in half, create two pieces, four by six, which you can punch and then they are going to cover up completely your front cover and the back cover. Now, just because I did promise that I'm only going to use paper from one paper pad, I'm not going to cover it up where you actually wrap 
the paper around your uh, cardboard, you meter the corners and so on. Here you can just stick it on top and then punch if you like to make your life easier instead of what I'm doing here so that uh, you do everything in one step. Just use paper and stick it front and back of your cover and then patch it once. And this is the second paper that I kept aside to make sure that I will use it for my covers. This is going to be 4 by 6 again and it's going to go on the inside of both my covers. But before I stick that down, I'm going to show you a little trick. I want to have some ribbon and uh, I want the ribbon to go through a little hole at the center. So I'm using my crop dial. I'm going to make a hole there. And I'm going to set an eyelet. I am using an eyelet that has that um, metallic uh, gold, pink gold look and feel, which matches, kind of matches with the rings that I used. If you have the perfect match, then that is even better. And then I'm going to use some ribbon, just cut out the piece that, uh, the size that you want with a ribbon that is very white like this one and quite bulky and thick I don't like to tie a bow rather I tie just a knot so I don't need a big piece I'm just going to uh, thread it through that hole and then glue it down at the back I am going to cover it up completely at the back by sticking at the end that piece of paper that I cut out and of course I repeat the same uh, uh, steps for the back cover. Put your front and back cover in place and you have a lovely booklet ready to go. Now if you want you can definitely decorate the front cover. If you remember I put aside in the beginning the cut apart page which is going to give you lots of elements to cut out, fuzzy cut and decorate your front. And I also put aside this pattern paper, which uh, is going to give you six different little inserts for the pockets inside. Their back is uh, plain, so you can definitely journal on them. You can uh, decorate them at the back if you like, or even stick photos there. So I'm just going to browse through the pages and tuck inside a couple of those uh, ephemeras. And here is one more idea. If you happen to have the 12 by 12 paper pad, then you can grab the exact same page and you will find the same uh, designs, but in bigger. So uh, if you want, you can cut out the bigger ones, punch them with the cinch and then add them as extra ephemeras or as extra pages where you can journal at their back. And I absolutely love when I add pages that are not the same size as uh, everything else. It looks more interactive, it looks more fun. So of course that was cheating. I did grab one page from the 12 by 12 uh, paper pad, but that was just to give you one more idea. So here I'm just going to tie my knot. Again, I don't like to do bows when uh, the ribbon is so bulky. I'm just going to cut out the excess. And now all that's left to do is to decorate the cover. Again, bring that pattern paper where you have all those elements. Cut out whatever you like and stick them on top. And I made sure as I was making this little journal not to use this page so you have something left over to decorate your pages inside and the cover. Now since I happen to have them, however, uh, I am going to use the chipboard from these collections. These are the die cuts which are nice and thick and I find that they are perfect for the covers. And uh, I'm just going to browse through them, try to decide which one I like. And at the end I decided to use just a scrap piece of paper which I'm going to stick on top of my cover. And uh, on top of that I'm adding some cheesecloth as you can see just to add an extra element, some texture and uh, to make it look more fun. By the way that scrap piece of paper is from the same booklet as I was making the pages. And then on top I'm going to stick three of the butterflies that were included in the die cut pack. As you can see I'm sticking down everything with my hot glue gun. You can definitely go with your glue. And then I have four metallic corners. They are the same, uh, they have the same look and feel as my eyelet there. So they are rose gold. I'm going to place them in the corners, all four corners of the booklet. And then with my tool, I'm going to press them down and secure them in place.
Now I'm down to using uh, the scraps from all the pages that I created. So here is one of the scraps and I'm going to cut out one of the quotes, which I'm going to use on the front of uh, my booklet. The phrase says, enjoy the simple things in life. I'm going to cut out both lines and I will actually cut it in half one of those lines so that I end up with three strips and I can stick one on each butterfly. So there you have it, a lovely project that you can hand out as a gift if you want. It can be used as an album, it can be used as a junk journal, it can be a calendar, an organizer, or just a simple journal. I think it is a great way to use up your 8x8 paper pads. You can get a completely different look by using different pads. And uh, you don't really need too many supplies. If you don't have a cinch, you can definitely go with any other binding technique. And I hope this video inspired you by showing you the foundation of this book and how you can start with it. And I'm sure that if you decorate the pages, if you add the inserts on the pockets, you are going to create something really amazing. So here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired to use up your 8x8 paper pads. Links to everything I used can be found in my blog as well as in the description of the video if you are watching on YouTube. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I hope you all have a lovely weekend.